The Johnson Wax Program, Words at War, with Clifton Fadiman. The makers of Johnson's Wax for Home and Industry, in cooperation with the Council on Books in Wartime, proudly presents Words at War, dramatizations of the most representative books to come out of this great world conflict. And once again tonight, we have with us one of America's foremost radio personalities, a man who knows good books, a well-known author himself, Mr. Clifton Fadiman. Tonight's headlines tell you that we're winning the war, that soon the Nazi machine will crumble and disintegrate forever. But will it? Is this the end of the war or just the beginning of the next? Tonight's program will attempt to answer that question. We'll tell you something about book and author as soon as Jack Costello finishes a brief message from our sponsors. When your friends or neighbors drop in for a visit, isn't it strange how often they drift back to the kitchen? And isn't it nice when they can compliment you on how clean and sparkling everything looks? You know, it's a great step in that direction when your linoleum floors are protected with Johnson's self-polishing glow coat. Then they're always presentable, always looking their best. Glow coat not only gives linoleum a lovely polish, but it keeps the colors fresh and new looking. And it saves you many hours of work because glow coat needs no rubbing or buffing. You simply apply and let dry and glow coat does the rest. It's well to realize also that the regular use of Johnson's self-polishing glow coat makes linoleum last six to ten times longer. That's important today when we need to make our things last. All right, Mr. Fadiman. Tonight's Words at War program is based on Kurt Reese's book, The Nazis Go Underground. We'll introduce this authentic expose by what's known in radio as a teaser scene. Listen, this is taking place all over Germany today. Listen and see what you make of it. Well, how do you like your new job with the hospital, Hans? Fine, Fritz. They will certainly never look for us here, huh? <laughs> Everything satisfactory with your new job at the fire department, Herr Kasper? Oh, yeah, yeah. Everything satisfactory, Herr Schmidt. <laughs> <laughs> Say, I hear you're working at the Red Cross now, Albert. Yeah, the Red Cross is a good place to be, too. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds innocent, doesn't it? Simply people changing their jobs, eh? But it's not quite as innocent as it sounds. What's it all about? Well, that's what we're here to tell you tonight. Our story proper begins in Berlin in May of 1943, in the library of one of Germany's leading industrialists. The industrialist, Herr Ludwig Gerhardt. The girl, his daughter and private secretary, Liesel Gerhardt. The ticker, a bearer of bad news. They have captured Novorossist. The Russians are 10 miles northeast of the city. Do you know what it means, Liesel? Nevertheless, we will win, Papa. The Führer said in his speech last week. What's the matter, Papa? What does it say? Bizerte has fallen. Our troops have surrendered in Africa. The Africa Corps surrendered. But when? How did it happen? We thought the campaign was going on schedule in Africa. That we were winning. The Führer said... Never mind what the Führer said. I must get to General Beck. What did you say? Never mind, Lisa. All you do is grumble, grumble. The fear is... Hit. I said never mind, Lisa. Now get those memos out right away. Don't forget you must be ready to leave in ten minutes. Why? Because you have a meeting with Herr Krupp and Baron von Schnitzler at Chateau Hugel for two o'clock. I've already ordered the car. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Slipped my mind completely. Oh, I'm so tired. Those air raids are enough to drive a man insane. All right, get me... Yes? What do you want, Gerda? What's wrong, Mama? This telegram came just now from the War Department. I thought you might want to see it. What is it? Read it. Hans. Hans is dead. Killed on the Russian front. Like a common peasant. Fools. Imbeciles. Why don't they stop the slaughter? 
Why do they continue fighting when they know there's no more hope? Don't you know why, Ludwig? Ask yourself that question. Who killed your son, Hans? Who killed your son, Kurt? Who? I have no time for your idle questions, woman. I have no time. No, of course not. You have only time to start the war. You have only the time to make plans to rule the world. You have no time to look within yourself and see the monster you've created, the monster you've bred. Quiet! Not another word! Do you hear? Hmm. I think the way both of you are carrying on is absolutely disgusting. And contrary to all national socialist principles, you should be proud of Hans. He died serving the Führer on the field of honor. There is no greater reward for the use of Germany. To think, Liesel, that you were once my daughter, and that you, Ludwig, used to be a man I respected for his integrity. <laughs> Let's leave the Gerhardt family now and join Herr Ludwig Gerhardt in his important meeting. This meeting took place in the middle of May, 1943, only last year, at Chateau Hugo. Among those present were Krupp, head of the famous Krupp Munitions Works, Baron George von Schnitzler, chairman of the board of directors of IG Farben, and fat Herr Otto Peach, the owner of the biggest machine factory in Germany. What happened? Well, listen, you'll be interested. Herr Krupp is speaking. Gentlemen, for all purposes, the war may be considered as lost on all fronts. Therefore, we must take measures to preserve the Nazi movement, so that Did in future... Did you say preserve the Nazi movement, Herr von Krupp? Correct, Herr Gerhardt. But, but now that the war is lost, I can see no point in preserving the Nazi movement. May I remind you, Gerhard, that all the industrialists of Germany, including yourself, have done very well under the Nazi party. Perhaps you forget, Gerhard, that it was Hitler who liberated us from the threat of the workers' union. That's right. Yeah, that's... Saying nothing, of course, of the taxes, which are lower for us than in England and America. Very true. Very fortunate. Fortunate. I am not arguing that point. But now we see that Nazism has failed. What reason is there to preserve that? You've overlooked something, Gerd. It's always been the destiny of the German industrialists to rule the world. This destiny must be fulfilled. If not in this war, then in the next. The next war? Naturally. We must plan for that at once. But do you realize what you are saying, Baron von Schnitzler? Another war will result in... Another war will result in Germany's ruling the world. Oh. We weren't sufficiently prepared for this one, but we shall be for the next. I yeah. agree, Baron. Well, I don't. I am opposed to it. Utterly and unequivocally opposed. The idea is insane, preposterous. That's enough, Gert. You forget yourself. You will do as we say. I think Gerhard understands, Baron. He is overwrought naturally because of the death of his son. Very well, gentlemen, I propose we go to him, lad, once with this idea. Agreed? Agreed. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm for it. How about you, Gerhard? I am opposed. But you will follow all the same. Yes. I will follow. That was on May 10th, 1943. Six days later, at Gestapo headquarters, Heinrich Himmler called in his henchman. Heinrich Hitler. Hitler. Heil Hitler. Uh, sit down, Heismeyer, Kaltenbrunner. Thank you, Thank you. I will be with you in just a moment. Thank you, Thank Herr you. Gerhardt and I are having a most interesting conversation. Now, Herr Gerhardt, you are certain, you are absolutely certain you did not express any treasonable statements against the Führer and the party at the meeting at Chateau Hügel on May the 10th? I am sure if uh, you will ask Herr von Krupp, Baron von Schnitzler... That will not be necessary. It so happens, Herr Gerhardt, that we had dictaphones at that meeting. Dictaphones to record everything you said. Well, what have you to say now? Why, it's nothing, nothing at all. You, you must believe me. Uh, I didn't mean a thing. I was upset. You see, my, my son... Enough. You are lucky, Herr Gerhardt. You are lucky you are making robot planes. But I warn you, Watch your step. Do you hear that, Herr Ludwig Gerhardt? Watch your step. Yes, Herr Himmler. That's all. You may go now. Yes, Herr Himmler. Heil Hitler. Heil Hitler. 
Why didn't you shoot him, Herr Himmler? Time enough for that, Carlton Brunner. We may need him in the future. Now, fellow party members, I shall be brief and to the point. The news from the front is bad. It is possible that Germany will be defeated on the military front. It is even possible that Germany will have to capitulate. But never must the National Socialist Party capitulate. That is what we have to work for from now on. You are absolutely correct, Herr Himmler. The National Socialist Party must go yes, on. Yes, yes. Uh, the plan we have worked out is simple and direct. A new front is to be opened in Germany, and this new front will be the underground. Underground? Yes, Kaltenbrunner, underground. But well organized because we have time to prepare. Excuse me, Herr Himmler, but I don't quite follow. How will the party members be able to work after we are defeated? Mm, it's quite obvious, Kaltenbrunner, if you will only stop and think. What will happen when the Allied military government takes over? There are a great number of irreplaceable government organizations which they must of necessity let alone. For example, the numerous health departments. If there is any interference with them, the whole country, and uh, this includes invading troops, might be swept by an epidemic. Wunderbar, Herr Himmler. Uh, how many party members can we assign under this plan? Oh, I'm sure we can hide away between two and three hundred thousand men in plants, city administrations, and so forth. Party members will be assigned to fire departments and utilities. They will sit in tax collectors' offices, in the police force, in the railways, mails, <laughs> and even in the Red Cross. But who will the Allies deal with when Germany capitulates? We will take steps to kick certain high officials and businessmen out of the party, like uh, Fritz Thyssen and Schacht. They will be sent to Sweden, Switzerland, the United States. Once these men appear to be no longer in the good graces of the party, why, naturally, they will be the ones who will become acceptable to the allied the military government. When will this work of going underground begin? At once. When the allies march on Berlin, we shall be ready for them. <laughs> And now that we've met our principal players, let's go on and see how the master plan was put into operation. Let's see how the Gestapo organized the Nazi underground. Heil Hitler, members of the German Women's Bund, these are the tasks which we must undertake for the coming National Socialist Underground. One, special training of stenographers, typists, clerks, in short of all female personnel likely to be used by the Allied military government. Two, the training of young girls to disseminate our propaganda to foreign soldiers. Three, the training of women. From Konstantin Kiel to General von Brauchitsch, subject discharge of men from army. The following men, list attached, are to be discharged from the Reichswehr at once and are to be shifted to the maintenance of roads. This is to take place at once. Members of the Ordensburg Sandhofen, Today, we shall take up our propaganda work in the United States. Miller? Uh, yes, Herr Schmidt. Miller, whom would you attempt to contact if you were in the United States? I would try to reach uh, Fritz Kuhn. A dumb <laughs> I'll make arrangements for you to be shipped to the Russian front. <laughs> Schultz. Yes, Herr Schmidt? Why is this answer so completely idiotic? Because Kuhn is too much identified with our movement. Very well. Whom would you pick, Schultz? I would contact the real Americans who were friendly to our beliefs before the war. Good. But how would you know them? Well, I would look at their records. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. And I would pick those who are anti-Semitic. Fine, fine. And those who have fostered all kind of racial hatred. Excellent. Any more? Uh, yes and the members of those many organizations which have been advocating a negotiated peace. Very good, Schultz. We'll arrange for your passage to Argentina, and from there you will go to the United States. You, Schultz, will be our underground representative in America. <laughs> The 
This is Clifton Fadiman bringing you Words at War in behalf of the makers of Johnson's Wax. Tonight, Kurt Reese's book, The Nazis Go Underground. We've seen how the Nazi underground has been organized, with trusted Nazis being installed in key spots which the Allies would not be likely to disturb, places like health departments and so forth. Now, how will the German industrialists figure in this master plan? Let's go back to Herr Gerhardt and his family. In June of 1944, Herr Gerhardt was undergoing a typical experience in Germany, an air raid. He was getting a taste of his own medicine. Oh, those blasted air raids. I can't stand them. Day and night, air raids, air raids, air raids. They're coming closer, Ludwig. The British and the Americans coming closer. Oh, shut up, woman. If I could only get out to Switzerland, Sweden... Hello. Hello. Herr Gerhard? Yes, who is this? This uh, Himmler. Oh, Herr Himmler. Uh, Heil Hitler, I, I mean, uh, how do you do? Uh, I didn't expect... I have some good news for you, Herr Gerhard. Very good news. You have? How would you like to go to Spain? Away from all the air raids? Spain? Yes, it has come. A chance to escape. They are sending us to Spain. Uh, I would like it very much, Herr Himmler. Very much. Good. I knew you would. When you be able to leave? Oh, at once, right away, any time you say. Good. Of course, Herr Gerhard, uh, we can trust you there. You won't run away from us. Run away? Of course not. Why should I want to run away? Naturally, you can trust me, Herr Himmler. Naturally. Uh, oh, uh, incidentally, we will give you all the necessary travel expenses and you will be taken care of quite handsome. Travel expenses? But, but I'm perfectly willing to pay my own. Oh, that won't be necessary. You see, uh, you will be leaving your family and your funds behind. Oh. But you don't have to worry. We will take good care of them for you. You see, we trust you. And you can trust us. Good night, Ludwig. Good night. I must see General Beck at once. So you see, General, that is their plan. What makes you think, Herr Gerhard, that such a thing would be bad? That the generals are not planning the same thing? Same thing? Do you think we will accept defeat? Crawl before the Allies? Forget our plans for conquest of the world? But, but nevertheless, General, the Nazi party is not working with you, but against you. You weren't consulted about this underground plan. Why then should you want to save Hitler's skin? Your own skin, yes. But why his? He's the one who is responsible for our defeat. He's the one who has countermanded your orders, brushed aside your advice, your experience. Uh, you, you said so yourself, General Beck. So, now you propose that I organize a revolt among the generals. Oh, I didn't say revolt, General, but... Uh, but what? If you can get him out of the way. I see. And you? What is your function in this, Herr Gerhardt? You will play safe while we do the dirty work, is that it? No, 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 of course not. I shall, of course, back you up to the fullest extent. Once he's out of the way, I shall be in favor of your taking control. I have friends who feel <laughs> the same way, who will lend all necessary assistance. Do I make myself clear, General Bay? Oh, quiet. Then you agree. I will give your proposal my utmost consideration, Herr Gerhard. We don't know whether General Beck ever carried out the plan suggested by Herr Ludwig Gerhardt, but we do know this. Meanwhile, all those connected with the attempt 
talking about? Yes, sir. The Gestapo. They are coming. I'll be arrested. I must get away. You will have to help me, Yata. Help me get away. We'll both go away. We'll fly to Switzerland. You must get to Liesl. Tell her to have the plane ready. To meet us. I, Ludwig? Yes, you don't stand there. There's no time. Take the car. It isn't safe to use a telephone. No, Ludwig. I will not. I will not help you. What? You have created a monster. And now he has come to crush you. All you wanted was money. Power. As long as you got it through them, you were satisfied. You were satisfied no matter what the consequences. No matter how many people you killed. Including your own flesh and blood. Stop it. Stop it, Gata. Now you will take the medicine. I've been waiting for that for a long time. They are here. They are here, Gata. Open the door, Ludwig. Let them in. They are your friends. But, Gata, if you want to help me... Open the door, Ludwig. All right, Gata. I shall never forget this. Never. Ah... Uh, Herr uh, Himmler! Uh, Heil Hitler! Well, aren't you going to invite us in, Herr Gerhard? Why, of course, of course! Come in, gentlemen, I... Thank uh... you. Good day, Frau Gerhard. Now, what is this I hear about you not liking us anymore, Ludwig? I? Not like you? <laughs> Why, that's ridiculous, Herr Himmler! I never said anything of that kind. Never. Of course not. <laughs> That's probably just a rumor. Yes, <laughs> naturally. I imagine some rumor among us that you were actually connected with the attempted assassination of our Führer. Imagine accusing you. I? <laughs> <laughs> That's really a joke. Who would ever accuse me? After all, I have done for the party. <laughs> oh, indeed. <laughs> Except... Uh, Perhaps von Schnitzler and General Beck. Beck? The comedy is over, Herr Gerhard. And since you are such an old friend of the party, I have taken it upon myself to... No! No! Please! Please, Herr Himmler! Please! Gerda, please tell them I had nothing to... That, Frau Gerhard, is what we do as traitors. Your turn will come too, Himmler. The day is coming when you and your party will be crushed forever. Do you hear them? The Allied planes are here again. Thousands of planes to blast you out. And they will kill you all. Oh, no, Frau Gerhard. They will not kill us all because we are too many. We are all over the world, in Argentina, England, Sweden, Turkey, Spain, Italy, the United States. And in Germany, we are underground already. We have burrowed so deep that their bombs will never reach us. Well, how do you like your new job at the hospital, Hart? Fine, Fritz. They will certainly never look for us here, huh? <laughs> Everything satisfactory at the fire department, Herr Kasper? Yeah. Ninety percent party members, Herr Schmidt. <laughs> Say, I hear you're working at the Red Cross now, are there? Yeah. The Red Cross is a good place to be when the AMG gets here. <laughs> yes. They have burrowed so deep that their bombs will never reach us. Let them come. This is only the beginning. This is but a prelude to the war we shall win. World War Three. Now, what can we do about it? I can hear the answer from thousands of lips throughout the United States. Stamp out Hitlerism, crush the Nazi party once and for all, and thereby make another war impossible. But how? There is but one answer. Nazism is not only a German specialty. Nazism, fascism, is as international as murder, as greed for power, as injustice, as madness. Let's remember this. When a man isn't hungry, he doesn't need a Hitler. When a man has a roof over his head, he won't listen to Hitler. When a man can live in peace and make a decent living, he won't turn to Hitler. As Kurt Ries says, make this a better world, and you'll stamp out Hitlerism and all other forms of fascism.
After I present a message on behalf of our sponsors, Mr. Fadiman will return to tell us about next week's Words at War program. You know, folks, I'm sure that no matter how good your car's engine and battery and tires are, the car only looks as good as its paint job. You may not realize that dirt and road grime and insects can do considerable damage to the finish if you don't remove them. Cleaning and polishing a car really does a lot more than keep up appearances. It saves the finish itself. When that cleaning and polishing can be done so easily with Johnson's Car New, then I know I'm doing you a favor to suggest that you buy a package of Car New this week and give your car a protective beauty treatment. Car New saves work because it does two jobs at once, both cleans and polishes in one easy application. You apply this liquid cleaner, let it dry, wipe it off. It leaves the finish satin smooth, sparkling like new, easier to keep clean. Remember the name, Johnson's Car New. Spelled C-A-R-N-U. And now, Mr. Fadiman, what about next week's program? Well, next week we hope to bring you one of the outstanding war novels of the season. Neville Shute's Pastoral. I say we hope to bring it to you. The reason being that so far we haven't been able to locate the author to get the necessary permission. You see, Neville Shute is an RAF flyer. And an RAF flyer on active duty is a pretty hard man to track down. But we hope to catch up with him before next Tuesday and arrange to bring you his novel, Pastoral. If not... We'll delay it for a week or so and bring you another fine book instead. Now, this is Clifton Fadiman inviting you to be with us again next week. And until then, goodbye. Tonight's dramatization was written by Ben Kagan and featured Theo Getz. Music was composed and conducted by Morris Mamorsky, and the production was under the direction of Anton M. Leader. Next week, the Johnson Wax program again presents Words at War. <laughs> Jack Costello speaking. This is the National Broadcasting Company. Mm.